All right, so now we're going to look at finding limits um, numerically, and then we're going to look at limits uh, graphically. When we look at limits numerically, we're basically we're going to construct a table of values. In the last video, you know, I showed you how you can use your table feature in the TI-83 or TI-84 calculators, for instance, to quickly do this. Um, uh, graphically, we'll be looking at the graph of the function to estimate the limits. Okay, so let's let's look at this. Let's estimate the limit as x approaches 9 of the function g of x of g of x equal to this function here. Notice clearly that this function is not defined at x equals 9. And as we've said in the previous video, the value of the limit, what the value, what the function is trying to obtain uh, is not dependent necessarily upon the value of the function um, at, at 9 in this case. So what I've done is I've constructed a table of values and you can use the TI 83 or 84's uh, table feature to do this. And you can see I'm approaching 9 here, we say from below values a little bit less than 9, 8.9, 8.99, 8.999, 9, and so on. Um, and these are the, the values of, uh, of g of x. Um, also, I'm approaching 9 from above, values a little bit more than uh, 9, 9.1, the value of g of 9.1 is this, 9.01, here's the value of the function, 9.001. So you see as we move from either side inward, we're approaching 9, right, we're getting closer and closer to 9, so the function is getting closer to closer to what? Something in between these two values here, something in between here and here, okay? So you know, what could it be? Well, we don't know necessarily exactly, but we can approximate it. For instance, I might just take the average of these two values. All right. Average is going to be the number in between those two values, and so there's a good estimate, which is in this case 0.166665. And so I can I can say from this that my estimate then for the limit as x approaches 9 of the function g of x, or the limit as x approaches 9 of the square root of x minus 3 over x minus 9 is, um, you know, about, and I'll do little curly equal signs, wiggly equal signs rather to indicate this is an approximation, um, that value. Of course, any value in, in between these two numbers would appear to be uh, a, a valid estimate for the limit. And numerically, we have to deal with the fact that, you know, we're, we're estimating. We're not going to necessarily have the exact value of the limit. Okay. Um, so, so there's uh, uh, an example of finding a limit numerically. Let's look at another example here. I want to look at the function sine x over x, and I want to take the limit as x approaches 0. Notice again, when I plug in and try and evaluate this at zero, I'm going to run into problems because dividing by zero down here, right? Sine of zero divided by zero is not defined. Um, it's actually a, a form that we're, we're going to call indeterminate because sine of zero is also zero. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, when, when I'm doing this table, by the way, what mode should I be in? Should I be in radian or degree mode? for a function because we have this trig function. Remember that? Well, I need to be in radian mode. We're not talking about degrees. We're talking about sine of x as a function of real numbers. So I need to be in radian mode. Uh, just show you that uh, if you have a TI calculator, there should be a mode button somewhere. And if you hit that mode button, you will see uh, somewhere the radian versus degree mode. If radian is not highlighted, go down to it, hit enter and then it will highlight that and in radian mode will be turned on. Okay. So when I do this, um, I'm going to close to zero. So, so I get close to zero from either side, from negative uh, 0.1 and, and positive 0.1, and then I get closer, right? Notice how I get closer. 0 0.01 is closer than 0 0.1 to zero. Negative 0 0.01 is closer than negative 0 0.1 to zero, right? And so on. And, and if you look at the output of these values, you'll see some symmetry. In fact, if you remember, sine of x is what we call uh, an odd function, and x is an odd function. And so the division sine x divided by x results in what we call an even function. In other words, there's symmetry 
with respect to the y-axis. So we get the same output for the function at negative 0.1 as we do for positive 0.1. Well, what do you think? What are, we, are we getting closer and closer to some value as, as x gets closer and closer to zero? What's the value of this function getting closer and closer to? All right. Now, in this case, it's not something in between these two values, but it's getting closer and closer to, to what? Maybe 1, right? Maybe 1. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, 0 0.9999999999. Maybe that's what it's getting closer to. We don't know. But again, this is just an estimate. But I'm going to estimate that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x divided by x is 1. And in fact, that is indeed the case. We will uh, prove this later on with uh, something called uh, the squeeze theorem. We'll be able to prove that the limit of sine x divided by x as x approaches 0 is 1. And then later on in the course at the end we'll prove it by another uh, rule that we'll develop. Okay. Um, just looking at the graph of this function can maybe be intuitive. We're going to switch to looking at limits graphically here in a minute. And so I want to take a look at this um, uh, sine x divided by x. And I want my window setting to be from, uh, let's say, negative 2 to 2. I want to be close to 0. And um, I'm going to go from uh, negative 1 to positive 1 in the y. Okay. And there's the graph, right? And you can see now if we there's there's as you move further out as x gets larger, you see some ups and downs, you know, like you would expect to see maybe from the sine x function a little bit, uh, but it quickly approaches zero because as, as x gets large and larger and larger, sine x is staying between one and negative one. But it, but what our interest is is what happens as, as x gets close to zero. In fact, if I go to trace right at x equals zero, there is no value, right, again, because it's undefined. But if I look at any value, uh, let's say a little bit greater than zero, right, 0.4, for instance, something we get y equals 0.9. As I move closer and closer to zero, you can see, maybe let me, let me open that window up instead of going to one for y max, let's go to two. So when I trace this time, right, as I get closer and closer to, to zero from above, you see we're getting closer and closer, uh, it seems like, to one. Now, if we were drawing this graph, we would there would be a hole there. Why don't we see a hole in the graph? It's because we have the axis turned on for the, for the calculator. You can actually, I think, under um, format... Under format, you can turn the um, axis on and off. I don't know. Let's just see if we can do that. Turn the axis off. And if I go back and look at the, the graph, now I don't have the axis, but you see the hole now. <laughs> see that little hole right there. So keep in mind, you won't always see a hole in the graph when there is one. With the calculator, you have to have the, the, the window settings set up right. If, if The way it samples points and plots points, you may not see the hole. So don't, um, don't worry if you don't see a hole, but um, certainly we want to be able to understand it doesn't even matter what's happening at that hole, right? Because we don't plug in. We can't plug in zero here. And so we're, we're observing what happens as x gets close to zero. And it appears as though this function sine x over x is approaching 1. All right. Now, as we move to graphically, I want to take a look at what we call one-sided limits. And I want to look at this particular simple function here. Uh, the function f here is a piecewise defined function. Do you remember those? And it's a very basic function. Uh, if the value of the input x is less than 2, the output is always 1. If the input uh, is exactly 2, the output is 2. So in other words, f of 2 is equal to 2. And if the, the input um, is uh, greater than 2, the output is always 3. And here's the graph of the function. So notice 
for any value less than, here's x equal 2, if I plug in any value of x less than 2, the output is going to be 1. I'll have a height of 1. So the graph is just a horizontal line, right? Horizontal line. Uh, f of 2 is equal to 2. f of 2 equals 2. Here's that point. These will have to, will emphasize, right, as being open circles because remember, vertical line drawn here can only pass through the graph at one point, and that's the one point, right? So, so that we have a function. If x is greater than 2, the output is always 3. Okay, so this is a weird looking function, and um, it, as x approaches 2 now from the left, or what we say the negative side, or from below, so we approach from this way, think about what the table of values would be. Right? If I plug in 1, 1, the output is 1. If I plug in 1 and a half, the output is 1. If I plug in 1.9, the output is 1. 1.99, 1. 1.9991. 1. 1. One. If I was doing a table of values, I would say, hey, looks like we're getting closer and closer to 1. Look where we're going as we sort of ride along this graph. As we move, as x gets closer and closer to 2. We're going right towards this hole, right, which has a y coordinate of what? 1. We are approaching a limit, we say, from the left side of 1. And, and this is the way we write this. When the function approaches 1 as x approaches 2 from the left, we write the limit as x approaches 2, and then there's a minus sign after the 2. I like to just write it a, a minus sign right after 2. Sometimes you'll see it as a superscript. I like to do it as a, just a, a, a you know, minus sign after the 2 so it's easy to see. This is not the limit as x approaches negative 2. This is the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side or from the left. So as we approach it this way, we're approaching 1. However, as x approaches 2 from the right, what's happening? If I plug in values close to 2 from uh, the right that are close to 2, like 3, I get 3. 2.5, I get 3. 2.1, I get 3. 2.01, I get 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. I'm approaching 3, right? So I ride along this curve. I walk along this curve. I'm getting closer and closer to this hole here. That's where I'm going, right? So we say now the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, and we write this. The limit as x approaches 2 with a plus sign after this. So the plus sign after the number we're taking the limit at, that indicates the limit from the right. So we have a limit from the left and a limit from the right, okay? Now, what about the limit? You know, we're talking about what's, we've talked about the limit from the right and the limit from the left. What is the limit as x approaches 2? What's the limit as x approaches 2? Well, we've got a problem. From one side, we're getting closer and closer to 1. From the other side, we're getting closer and closer to 3. So are we getting closer and closer to one value from both sides? No, we are not getting closer and closer. Um, the value of the function at 2 is equal to 2, but we're not getting closer and closer to 2. We're, we're going closer and closer here. You know, this point is way over here. We're, we're, we're getting closer here. Same here. We're getting closer and closer to this open circle. It's kind of like if, if um, you and your friend wanted to go meet at the McDonald's for, for lunch, say, and you say, hey, let's, let's meet there at noon, and you drive, and you travel to a McDonald's on one side of town, and your friend travels to the McDonald's on the other side of town, right? You're at different locations, right? Um, you're at the McDonald's, um, and, but you you are not at the same location. So so both we might say both of the you, you going is is one of the two sides, right? The left or from the right. But but you're not meeting at the same point. We're not getting closer and closer to the same point. Now, um, in this case, what do we say about the limit as x approaches two? We say the limit does not exist. So here's a classic example of how the limit does not exist. By the way, the value of the function at 2 really doesn't matter. This point right here, I could redefine this to be equal to 1 if x is equal to 2. Right? If I can, I can slide that point down into this hole, that would not change our analysis at all. The limit from the left would still be 1, the limit from the right would still be 3, and the limit as x approaches 2, or sometimes we say the two-sided limit, right? because it's from the left and right, is going to to not exist, right? So the limit as x approaches 2 does not exist for this function. And, and so when we compare limits from the right and left with the limit, or the two-sided limit, we have this important uh, theorem here. If the limit as x approaches a of the function is L, that's going to be true if and only if 
the limit from the left and the limit from the right are both equal to L. And if and only if just means if, if this thing over here is true, then this must be true. And it means if this thing here is true, then this thing must be true. Sort of a bi-directional. And so notice back here, the, the one-sided limits both exist, but they're not equal. That indicates that our function, the limit, does not exist at x equal 2. So let's see if we can review these with a little graph and see if we understand what's happening here. Here's the graph of the function h of x and it's got some holes and breaks and jumps and things going on here so I'll emphasize these. Um, and we're going to use this to estimate the following limit. So let's take a look at, well, values first of all. This is pre-calculus. What is h of negative 2? What's the value of the function at negative 2? Do we have a value? A negative 2, hmm, there's what? What's that? Open circle. There's no point there. So that's not where we go. We go down here, right? There's the point, right? What's the value of the function at that point? It's the y value is negative 2. So h of negative 2 is equal to negative 2. What's h of 1? Well, h of 1, well, no confusion there, the value of the function is 1. What's h of 3? h of 3, well, we go down, oh, is that, no, that's a hole, so there's no point there. We move down here, here's the point. The output is negative 2. Okay. So this is a weird function, one we typically don't see where the point is just sort of popped out there. But this is what we have to illustrate these ideas. Now let's look at the limits. What's the limit as we approach, look at this, negative 2 what? From the negative side or from the left. So here's negative 2. We're going to approach it from, from this side. We're, we're coming from this direction, right? X is getting closer and closer to negative 2 this way. So what's the value of our function getting closer and closer to? We would be moving along this curve as X gets closer and closer to negative 2. And where are we going? Where are we going on this graph? We're going closer and closer to this hole, right? Which has a Y coordinate of what? Two, right? So the value of the function is getting closer and closer to two as x approaches two from the negative side. What about as x approaches negative, sorry, negative two? What happens when we approach negative two from the positive side? Right? So now we're going to approach negative two from the positive side going this way. Now the value of the function is what? As x gets closer and closer to negative two, we're getting closer and closer what? To this point right here so that the y value is what? Approaching what? Negative two. So the limit from the left is 2, right, we're approaching 2 here. The limit from the right is negative 2. What do we say about the two-side limit? What did we just talk about? It does not exist, right, because we're not going to the same location. We've got to connect. We've got to be going to the same location, right? Your friend's going to this McDonald's, you're going down to this one, right? And so um, we don't meet and the limit does not exist. Let's look at 1. What's the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side? So here's x equal 1. As we approach it from the left, from below, right, we're coming this way. We're moving up this curve. Where are we going to? We're going right to that point, right? So the limit is 1 from the left. What about from the right? Well, same thing. As, as x approaches 1 from the right, we're going right to that same point. And therefore, the limit as x approaches 1 of the function h of x is equal to 1. Well, in this case, you know, there's something interesting, right? The value of the function is 1, and the, the limit is 1. And, and basically, there's no hole or gap or anything going on here. Uh, there's a little sharp turn there. But um, as far as limits go, hey, that's, that's, that's easy. We don't, we don't have to guess what the function is trying to obtain. It's trying to obtain its actual value at 1. What about at 3? What's happening there? The value of the function at 3, we said, was what? Negative 2. But as we approach 3 from the negative side, so we're plugging in values less than 3, like 2.5. What do I get when I plug in 2.5? I'm going to get maybe about, what, negative a half, right? And as I plug in 2.9, 2.99, and so on, what am I doing? The y values are getting closer and closer to what? The y value of this hole, which is what? Negative 1. So as I approach from the left, the limit is negative 1. As I approach from the right, same thing. Remember, the, the value of the functions are, are, are here on this curve, right? So at 3.5, I'm at negative 1.5. 3.9, I'm here, getting closer and closer again to this. 
Not getting closer to that point, getting closer and closer to this point, this hole, which again has a y coordinate of negative 1. Well, what do we know? If the limit from the left and the right both exist and are equal, which they are, then our two sided limit or our limit is the same. That's what we just looked at, that important theorem. Now, what's going on here? The value of the function is negative 2. How can the limit be negative 1? Because that's where we're going. The value of the function at 3 has no bearing whatsoever on our limit. In fact, this point, I could slide it all the way back into this hole and just redefine the function so that h of 3 is negative 1, and that doesn't change any of this at all. I could also completely remove the point, and it still doesn't change the limit down here, these limits same. Certainly would change the value of the function, would be undefined, it wouldn't be in the domain. But the limit is still the same. So again, the value of the function right at 3 has no bearing on the limit as x approaches 3. So very important to understand that detail. Okay. One last thing to take a look at, uh, well, two things actually, but um, I want to talk about um, so-called infinite limits. Let's look at these two functions, and um, we can we can do a quick table of values here for this. If I uh, enter this function here, which is 1 divided by 1 minus x cubed, take a look at that function. And let's go to a table. Let's delete these values. And I want to get close to uh, 1. I want to take a look at what's happening right as x approaches 1. First, I'm going to go from the negative side. So what's that mean? Less than 1. What's a number less than 1 that's close to 1? Like a half? Or 0.8? Or 0.9? Or 0.99? Or 0.999? So look at those values as x gets closer and closer to 1, and I've got them in this, this table. What's happening to them? We're not getting close to any number. What's, what's this 1e6? This is 1 times 10 to the 6th power. It's a 1 with 6 zeros, right? right? That's a, a million, right? We've got 1,000, we've got a million, and we got a billion. This is what? Like a vertical asymptote, right? Same thing as I approach 1 from above. If I approach 1 from above, let's see what happens there. It's like 1.5, 1 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001, right? Getting closer, whoops, getting closer and closer to 1 from above. Well, now the same thing, except what they're negative, right? They're negative. Negative 1,000, negative a million, negative a billion, right? And so we're clearly not approaching any value. Clearly the limit does not exist as a finite value. But what we have is a vertical asymptote. In fact, if I go back up to this and let's let's zoom in a I'm going to zoom in a decimal zoom window for. You can see right at x equal 1 here that we have a vertical asymptote. Right? As I approach uh, x from below, uh, uh, 1 rather from below, what was happening the values of the function was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? By the time we got to you know, 0.99, we were at uh, a million, right? Way up. I mean, so far up it is crazy, right? In incredibly high. Uh, as we approach one from the positive side, same thing, except we're going down, right? So it's a vertical asymptote. So the way we describe this behavior, we call these limits. Uh, they're, they're not finite, right? But to indicate this behavior, we introduce this notation. We say the limit as x approaches one from the negative side is infinity. We say that f has an infinite limit. Again, this does not mean infinity is a number. It simply expresses the idea the value of the function gets arbitrarily large, as um, big as we want to as x gets close to 1 from the left. Okay, And we see graphically we have a vertical asymptote. Same thing from the positive side. We notice what? The limit is going to minus infinity, we say. Okay. Um, so in this case, the function has a vertical asymptote at x equal 1, and that's real important that we have this fact in general. This is the way we define vertical asymptotes in calculus. If the limit as x approaches a from the negative or positive side is plus or minus infinity, then the function g has a vertical asymptote at x equal a. So let's see if you can understand these concepts. 
with this graphical example. So let's find the following limits using infinity, minus infinity, or does not exist as needed. The dashed lines represent vertical asymptotes. So as we approach negative 2 here from the negative side, what's happening to the values of the function? We're approaching that vertical asymptote. We're dropping down, right, down, down, down. So we're going to say what? It's negative infinity. As x approaches negative 2 from the positive side, what's happening? Same thing. We're dropping down to negative infinity. All right. Now, what about the limit as x approaches negative 2? Well, since both sides we are approaching negative infinity, we will typically say then that the limit as x approaches negative 2 is negative infinity. Let's look at what's happening at 3. As we approach 3 from the negative side, from below, from the left, we're going to be dropping down again, right? So we're going to minus infinity. However, as we approach 3 from the positive side, what's happening? Going up, up, up. That is approaching positive infinity. In this case, right, where the limit is going to negative infinity, the limit going to positive infinity, the limit as x approaches 3, we would clearly say does not exist. Is that we have to approach positive infinity from both sides or, or, or negative infinity from both sides for the limit to exist at, at infinity, we say, or, or, or as, a, sorry, as an infinite limit. Okay, so that's how we deal with vertical asymptotes. Okay, in the next video, we're going to show an example of uh, using this information to sketch a graph, and so we will finish up our introduction to limits numerically and graphically with that video.